name is Patty. And I'm Pastor. And, and this, this is NTV. My brother and I are extremely happy to present to you this year's episode of NTV. And we're extremely happy to be your host. Now let's go to Noelia and Yvelle on their new segment, New Teachers Here at Northside. Hi, this is Noelia Adamis. And this is Yvelle Manuel, and we're presenting to you a segment called New Teachers, and we're here interviewing Mr. Boynton and Miss May. So this is a question for you, Miss May. How does it feel to be the first um, and only female security guard here at Northside? Like, do students look at you differently for being the only female? Not really. I feel like, um, it's not as awkward as people think it is because I'm around a bunch of guys. You know, it's, it's been a really good experience so far, so I'm happy with that. Thank okay. you. Well, Mr. Boynton, can you describe your teaching style? Yeah, sure. I, I think in a word it would be just, just positivity. Um, just a smile and a handshake when the kids come in. I think it, it kind of sets the right vibe. and. You know, when kids are happy and they're relaxed, I think they're ready to learn. And then, of course, the content comes after that. It needs to be compelling. You need to uh, give something that's relevant, that's interesting. Um, uh, and, you know, it, of course, they learn the whole time. Uh, but I think from the start, if you develop that relationship and, and let them know they're cared for, I think the rest of it kind of takes care of itself. Miss May, so we know that this is the first year that Northside has its dedicated cheerleading squad. How did you and Ms. Newsom come up with this idea and which are some of the events that you guys are planning on performing in? Well, Ms. Newsom was actually the one to come up with the, with the idea and put it at the table and um, she had asked me to be her assistant coach so I took it because her and I have a really good working relationship. So um, yeah, we are very excited for the girls and for what we have planned for them. We are planning to perform at the Purple Carpet this year, and uh, of course, varsity basketball games. And we're hoping and planning to have our own spring recital. Um, Mr. Boynton, some of the students here have seen your tattoos, and we'd like to know like, which one is meaningful to you, and um, why did you get them? Yeah, uh, yeah good question. Um, so, this one isn't meaningful at all. The thing I remember most about this one is just the 25 hours of pain it took to actually get the tattoo. It's the most memorable thing I have of that one. Um, uh, but this one's a little different, right? So it's obviously kind of atypical. Um, and I tried to get away from it for a number of years, but I, but I wanted it, and so I eventually got it. But, so I was down in the Caribbean, and, uh, and some of the indigenous people down there, this is, uh, they call them morning bands. It's kind of a... It's, it's a tribal art form, and for them it has to do with, um, it, it's, it's a personal deal, but for a lot of them it means there's something that, a choice they've made or something that they've done in life that they don't want to forget. And typically it is uh, some sort of decision that, that maybe an embarrassing community or uh, some sort of mistake that they can't afford to make again. And so they get a, a visual representation that could be one inch, two inch, or, or three inches. Uh, and, and for me, it's not any particular mistake I made. Uh, yeah, it, I just really love the, the art of it, and I, and I like the idea of it too. Thank you for asking the question. This is one last question for both of you guys. Um, how do you feel being part of the Northside family? Uh, you can start, Mr. Boyd. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, you know, it, it really is a family, and I think that's the first thing that um, is what is so um, so wonderful about it. Um, just new teachers, a lot of times in a new building, it's not that they were a bit, you know, hazed or, you know, made fun of or anything like that, but you never really feel that accepted until you've been in a couple years. And that's students and uh, in the faculty, but here we, I, I felt so embraced and I felt like my, uh, my opinions and what I had to say was valued even though I was new to the building. Um, it's been an incredible experience and I'm, and I'm really excited about uh, staying here just as, as long as y'all have me. Nice to meet you. I think for me it's been um, it's been a very interesting learning experience. But I think what's made me feel the most welcomed, or who's made me feel the most welcomed, are the students. And um, I'm very appreciative of the very um, how can I say this? The very loving, you know, vibes that I've gotten and. You know, to have students that, you know, are willing to talk to you and approach you and know that you're there for them, you know, um, it's, it's a good feeling. I am Noelia Adamis. And I am Miguel Manuel. And this has been the segment, New Teachers at Northside.
Where are you going? I don't understand. Where are you going? I just have to go. Did he just kiss his chair? Goodbye. Hello everyone, and welcome. My name is Norman Lopez. I'm Michelle McClain. My name is Kyle Braga. And this is Where in the World Has Black Earth Been? Today, we'll be giving you, our audience, three hints. And after each hint, you'll get closer and closer to finding out where Blackburn has been. And it is up to you, our audience, to use these three hints to come up with a location and ultimately find out where Blackburn has been. So, without further ado, let's get you guys that first hint. Once a year, this country holds a fertility festival and reed dance called Umhalanga. During this week-long festival, over 25,000 unmarried girls of the kingdom dress in elaborate costume and sing and dance before the Queen Mother, giving the king an opportunity to choose a new wife. Hi, I'm Marlena Franco, and this is In The News. December 8th, the Advanced Vision Performing Arts will perform two one-act plays on popular films, The Breakfast Club and Reservoir Dogs. Please come and make sure you support our school. On December 14th, all Latin students will take the Latino Werbo. Remember to study for the competition. On December 16th, Northside will be hosting its annual winter concert. Advisors will be brought down to the auditorium. During that same day, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., there will be a school dance. Tickets are $3 and no outside guests are allowed. Now let's go to Sorrelli Santiago with the highlights of the presidential election 2016. Hi, my name is Sorrelli Santiago and I'll be sharing the highlights of this year's national election. So as you already know, the new president of the United States is Donald Trump. And though it was a tight match between him and his opponent Hillary Clinton, he ultimately won America over in a 50 point lead. However, Throughout his campaign, he received much negativity. This was in part of the alleged plagiarism of his wife, Melania, who had been discovered copied exact lines of Michelle Obama's 2008 convention speech. Her response on the issue was to throw blame at the speechwriting team that helped her create it. Another issue that arose was the surfacing of a video where Trump clearly describes how he sexually assaulted women. Though he apologized for the video that was recorded in 2005, his justification for his words was the use of locker room talk. Nonetheless, it caused him a great decline in his campaign trails. These accusations are yet to be proven true. Overall, despite all the scandals that happened throughout his campaign, Donald Trump defied all odds and is now getting ready to be seated in the Oval Office. Now let's have Alexa Baez with more on Trump's policies. Hi, my name is Alexa Baez. We all wonder what Donald Trump is going to do in his first day in the Oval Office. Some of his policies are repealing executive orders, ending free gun zones like a school and military bases, which is unlikely to happen under the House and Senate. Remove criminal illegal immigrants, as well as Syrian refugees, and immediately repealing Obamacare. We aren't sure how Trump's plans will turn out. It's gonna be a very interesting first day in the White House. to see the fall shows. Me too. Here on Northside, I remember when the talent show was our only show. Now, here on Northside, we have the fall show, the talent show, the musical, and two chorus concerts. It's a beautiful thing. Speaking of beauty, let's check in with Ashley Holder and Soraya Harrison on their new segment, Beauty and Lifestyle. Hey guys, I think we see you there. It's your girl Ashley coming to you with the high level question I don't know you. Stay tuned. Do like that. Girl, come feed me, don't be stingy. Why you gon' do like that? No, baby, don't do like that. Oh, I want you to do. 
First things first is you dip your angled brush into the dip brow and start drawing a line from the beginning of your eyebrow to the end in order to create a perfect arch. Remember to tread lightly on the beginning of your eyebrow so it can look more blended instead of bulky. Then you do the same exact thing for the top of your brow, remembering to go lightly at the beginning and darker towards the end. Now after filling in your brows, use the flat concealer brush and a concealer of your choice in order to clean up under your brows. And do the same for the top as well. And once you've applied the concealer, don't forget to blend. When I say blend, I mean blend. Blend for your life. Blend. And this, guys, is the finished look. This is how your eyebrows should look after you took all that time to finesse them. Baby, don't tell me you don't know that you're beautiful. No, baby, don't do like that. Thank you guys for watching the Alice Ashley. If you guys have any other suggestions, please let me know. See you later. Hi, I'm Soraya, and I'm the one and the only weaveologist at Northside. Today, I'll be talking to you about how to maintain your hair and your weave. But before we get to that, I would like to give you some fun facts about your hair. It is told that we tend to have between 100,000 and 150,000 hairs on our head. If you have blonde hair, you tend to have more hair on your head, over 150,000. It is also told that the most common hair color is black, the second most common hair color is blonde, and the least common hair color is red. Okay, ladies, I have noticed lately that, you know, we've been gelling down our edges, and that's not really healthy for our hair. Gel tends to make our hair very flaky, and it also tends to make our edges drop out. I prefer you ladies to use this edge control 24 hour edge tamer, which is really good for your edges, and it really makes your edges very healthy, and it also does not make your edges flaky or wet. When you're also doing your edges, I ask you to use a hard tooth brush. Do not use a hard brush comb. Ladies, if you want to curl your hair and you don't want to use the flat iron and curl iron to create any heat damage, I suggest you to use flexi rods. Flexi rods is way better than using a curling iron or a flat iron. Now, ladies, if you have weave and you want your bundles to be curled, I suggest you to mix conditioner and water in a spray bottle because curls tend to come out better. Ladies, now, if you want your curls to stay and you don't have a flexi rod, and you don't want to flat iron it or curl and iron it anymore after you already curled it, I suggest you to get a bonnet this size because it keeps the curls up and it makes the curls stay. Now, ladies with short hair, and you know your hair is just wrapped or your hair is just short, I suggest you to use this bonnet because it keeps your hair intact and it doesn't make your hair frizz. Now, ladies, Say if you were going out later, you just did your hair done, and you don't want your edges to frizz up or to get curled up, this is a tie head that you should use to keep your edges down while, you know, getting your nails done or you doing anything else besides your hair. Now, when you lay it down on your edges, you should place it under the hair, behind the ear, so that it can get all corners of your edges. I want to thank you and my friends, Ashley Jose, Cody Evel, for joining me for Weaveology 101. And if you have suggestions or questions, stop me, the hairy godmother in the hallway. See ya! Hello everyone, and welcome back to Where in the World Has Blackburn Been? Well, in the episode we gave you guys your first hint. Therefore, we think it's about time to give you your second hint. This country currently has the world's largest HIV epidemic, with one in four people carrying the virus. Hi, I'm K.
Kayla Gonzalez. And I'm Brian Flores. And this is Northside North Side Spaders. Today with us we have Song Valenzuela. And Noah Sosa. So to start off, I would like to ask both of you how your school year has been so far. My school year has been fine. I like all the teachers and I think the school year has been fine. My school year has been alright. Um, academically I have improved and I have no problems with my teachers this year. Everybody's pretty cool. That's good. That's good to hear that. So no, I have one question for you. Out of every junior in your class, why do you think we chose you? To be honest, I feel like I'm, this year I'm more of a hard-working student and I'm more passionate about my school. Salma, as a freshman, what was your first imp impression of Northside? Um, my first impression was that the school looked really small. You get to know everybody more because if it's a little bigger school, Everybody's, you don't really interact like that much with everybody, you just stick to yourself. But since it's a smaller school, you, you're not open to more people. No, um, so I've been hearing that you've been playing the sneakers and stuff. Like, how was that going? Um, it's alright. Like, I, I was looking for, like, a, a positive way to make money. And I noticed that a lot of people are into sneakers in the school, so... I basically just went around asking people if they needed sneakers to be cleaned and I charged them a low price and I basically just cleaned their sneakers. How you know guys? And Salma, how do you feel about being the only freshman on the volleyball team and the only one to stay because you weren't the only freshman to get on the team? I mean, at first it was kind of nerve wracking because I didn't really know a lot of the team members so I was just by myself and I didn't, I didn't know what to do or how, where to go, whatever. So, I was just nervous about that. It was very nerve wracking. Is it hard to balance your grades and being in a sport at the same time? Yes, at some points, because when we come out at six, it's like, um, when I take the bus home, it takes like almost an hour to get home. So then, then it's like hard to like focus because I'm so tired and I just wanna sleep. So it's hard to like study and do homework. So I was just like, I tried to balance it out. Keep it up though, because you're doing good. Thank you. No, um, it's your junior year, and have you been looking to like colleges and stuff? I have been, I'm actually interested into going into performing art colleges. So, um, you rap yourself, like, do you like look into doing a lot? I do actually, I, I rap, I write poetry, and I'm into theater and all that, you know, yeah. So, do you consider yourself a role model for the other freshmen? Yes, I do. I feel like I influence people now that I'm the only freshman on the team, so now people know that they can try out to them. They don't have to be scared. That's good. I'm sure you motivated other freshmen. Well, thank you, Salma. Thank you, Noah. I'm Katie Gonzalez. I'm Brian Flores. And this has been Northside's North Famous. Famous. Hi, my name is Nicholas Roy. And I'm Riley Board. And, and this, this is Northside Sports Center. Center. Last year, the girls soccer and volleyball team made it to the playoffs last year, as well as the boys basketball basketball team. The girls softball team also made it to the championship and won for two years in a row. This year, we finally have a cheerleading team led by Miss May and Miss Newsom. Oh, don't forget to mention the new soccer coach, Coach Wilson, who was also a Northside alumnus. And for the second year, we have a girls volleyball team led by Coach Dollhouse. Let's hear more about this year's team by the athletics director herself. Hi, Ms. Marsala. Hello. Um, how do you feel about the basketball team this year? The basketball team, how do I feel? Well, right now, junior varsity is going on, so I feel good. We're doing really well. We're third in the league right now. We only lost one game so far. There should be no games, but they're doing very well. They're doing better than they did last year to be ranked third in the league out of 24 teams. It's really good, so successful. I feel uh, good. Good, good. And how do you feel about um, the volleyball team, second year in a row? Second year, I mean, as a female myself, I always enjoy watching female sports progress, I guess you would say, over time. So the fact that this is the second year we have a team, they're also in the playoffs for the second time around, that's a big deal. To make playoffs in general a success in itself. So I'm very proud, I love it. I hope that we keep on going and we make a name for ourselves in the volleyball world as multi-volleyball. Can you tell us more about Coach Wilson? 
Coach Wilson. Um, Coach Wilson is the head coach of the soccer team this year. He is a former Northside student. He's an alumni. He's actually a senior in college right now, getting his bachelor's degree. He played on the first championship team that Northside had for soccer, and now he came back to coach. So it's awesome that he's now coming back and following in Mr. Hendrickson's old footsteps, taking over the team. All right, cool. Can okay, you give a word of motivation for students who want to try out? Um, never give up. Even if it might get tough or hard, never give up. Always keep pushing and going as hard as it might seem. Making it through to the end will always feel better than giving up. So just keep pushing. All right. That's all. That's all for this episode. I'm Riley Laborde. And I'm Nicholas Roy. And, and this, this is North Side Sports, Sports Center. Center. Hello, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Cody. And this is Careers in the Real World on NTV. Today, we'll be interviewing Dennis Yang. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Kevin. Cody, nice to meet you guys. Okay, Dennis, what exactly do you do? I'm an IT consultant. What that means is that I do a little bit of everything. Jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, do firewalls, servers, in network infrastructure, Mac OS X. Windows, uh, you name it. Oh wow, sounds pretty complex with the tech and all that. Um, did you need some type of education for that? Not at all. Uh, from my experience, uh, I didn't. I didn't graduate with a specific um, degree in technology. Um, since you didn't originally have any degree or any prior experience to getting this job, how did you get the job of yours? Well, I was working with my previous company, which is a broadband company, um, did internet. Um, so I was installing an internet router at my current company. Uh, my current boss at the time was not my boss, installed the router. I was installing the router, asked me a few questions to kind of pick my brain, kind of poach me. Um, asked me if I was interested in like going elsewhere, like looking for other opportunities. And I was like, yeah, why not? Two interviews later, uh, got the job, and now 11 plus years later, I'm uh, still consultant. Wow, that sounds really great. Uh, so how many hours do you exactly work in a day or a week? Uh, so Monday through Friday is usually the uh, 9 to 6 is the schedule uh, that we work. Um, personally, I take calls any hour of the day, um, emails, texts. They could ping me, I'll respond, uh, 365 days, so, so, um, yeah, wow, every, every day of the week, yeah. That's a lot of hours in one week or a day. Like, how do you exactly manage your time to suit that much hours? Well, you, like, everybody has to balance their professional and personal lives. Uh, luckily, we don't have children. I, I'm married six years now. Oh, Thank you. Um, so married six years. Um, gives me the ability to balance my professional and personal life so we could uh, essentially work hard play hard mentality uh, get the job done and you know, do my personal things after <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so is this the job that you wanted since you were younger or did you really build to get the job not necessarily it wasn't something that I was aspiring to do um, it kind of fell in my lap um, I really wanted to do like more um, art or like fashion. That's really my um, passion. Um, but now it's more of a hobby. So now, like my professional career it has guided me towards tech. So that's what I've been focusing on uh, and building my background in technology. Well, that's most of the time that we have here. So I'm Cody. I'm Kevin. And this has been Careers in the Real World. Back to you. Thank you, gentlemen, for giving us an insight into a career that would be perfect for a Northside student. I'm always excited when we have guests from the professional world come to visit Northside. It's an awesome chance for us to learn about all the wonderful opportunities that will be available to us when we leave. I'm excited for our next segment entitled, What You Think Versus Who I Really Am. What people think about me, that I am strict, stern, conservative, and I used to be a cop. 
What people don't know about me is that I'm artistic, I love to write, I'm passionate, and I've overcome a lot of obstacles. People think that I'm a very dramatic and emotional person, that I don't have any problems to deal with, and that I'm always happy. What people don't know about me is that I deal with the fact of not knowing if my brother will come back home from serving in the Navy, and that I put a smile on my face every day just to hide my true emotions. What people think about me is that I'm always happy all the time, always cheerful. What people don't know about me is that I struggle with low self-esteem and anxiety. Just because you get older doesn't mean that you just forget about all your problems. You definitely can't control everything in the world, but you can absolutely control how you react to it. Most people think that I'm mean and self-centered. What people actually don't know about me is that I'm very emotional and I have low self-esteem. People think that Mr. Blair does too much in the morning. Coming in the morning, I actually take the hoodies off. Take the headsets off, put the phones in the bag, put the goodie bag inside the bag. I guess that's too much for them. Well, well, people don't know that I'm really a lovable person. Um, I make a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. I mean, they say I should be a comedian. Um, I look, enjoy helping people whenever I can. Um, I love working out. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing. That's one of my passion. In the morning time, I love listening to the soft music, which is a great thing. I meditate that way before school. And um, what people don't understand is that I'm a good advice giver. You know, if kids are willing to listen to advice, I give great advice. My name is Angie Maldonado and this is Angie's Angle. In this segment, we polled students to get their thoughts and ideas on everything from curriculum to student life to discipline. Last week in advisory, we had 50 Northside students take out a short survey in advisory and I'm here to show you the results. When asked about what are you most concerned about after leaving Northside, 2% of you said getting married and starting family was your biggest concern. 18% of you said finding a job was your biggest concern. But the big winner of 80% of students say getting into a college of your choice was your biggest concern. I guess nobody wants to get married. You don't like kids? But seriously, I totally understand why 80% of you voice your concern about getting into the college of your choice. I'm a senior, but as underclassmen, I knew my main priority was college. I also took the liberty, you're welcome Northside, of asking what classes would you like to see offered at Northside. 12% of you said you would like Northside to offer dolphin training. I'll get back to that. 28% of you said you would like Northside to offer a fashion class. 60% of you said you would like Northside to offer a cooking class. I agree with both fashion and cooking class would be awesome. Now for dolphin training. At first I was like, what the heck? But then I was like, wait a second, McCarran Park pool, right? I can speak dolphin. E -e -e -e. Maybe not. Lastly, I asked students what they would miss most about Northside. The overwhelming consensus was that Northside students would miss their friends and their teachers. I'm Angie Maldonado, and this was Angie's Angle. As we said earlier, we are back to give you the third and final hint of the day. We hope that each hit we gave you has brought you closer and closer to finding out what black has been. So without further ado, Let's jump right into the final hint of the day. In this country, it is legal for rangers to shoot and kill individuals suspected of illegally poaching endangered animals. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on our show. And we hope you enjoyed the show. And we hope to see you next time on Where, Where in the World Has Blackburn Been? She's like one of the best teachers. She's my favorite teacher because she has a wonderful sense of humor. She'll be doing funny voices, faces, my faces. And but also she knows how to like for the bad kids to tell them, hey, yeah, you know, cut it out, like enough is enough. So I really she's like my favorite. In my opinion, Lazito is one of the best teachers at Northside. One, because she's the best at teaching global history. And two, because she doesn't just she's not just your teacher, she's also your mentor. She kind of becomes like, in my opinion, like your bigger sister. 
My favorite teacher is Miss Lazito because she's truly compassionate about kids and like what she do. Like I feel like it's not just an occupation for her. She truly care about us. Rock is one of my favorite staff members because one, he's really funny. Like he always have, he always got a joke. He always making jokes. Two, because I could go to him about anything. If I need to talk to him about anything, I need advice. I could go to him. He he always did. And three, when I first came to Northside, I was really nervous and orientation. I was like, I was just like mad timid. And then he came, gave me a dot, made sure he asked me what's my name, introduced himself, and made me feel like family. Rock is one of my favorite staff members in Northside because he's mad funny. And you can talk to him about anything. You can talk to him about family, struggles, grades, and candy, and he'll be 100% honest with you. Rock is one of the realest people I've ever met in my life, and I appreciate him. I appreciate him for that. I love my teachers. Yeah, we're so lucky to have a faculty that's so invested in the student body. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy our episode. I'm Patty. And I'm Past Love. And, and you've, you've been, been watching, watching NTV. NTV.